Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited. So today we are going to be doing the demo of the Bestope brush set from Amazon. So I've already applied my primer and moisturizer, the DDF Moisturizing Dew, and my Smashbox Blemish Control Primer as always. And now just applying my Chanel Vita Lumi Aqua and mixing that with the L'Oreal Lumi True Match, I think it's called. Um, it's a little bit lighter than the Chanel, so it matches my face a little bit better. I'm not super tan. The Chanel is more of a summer foundation for me. However, do not use a luminizing foundation on your nose or in your T-zone. You want to use a more mattifying foundation so it doesn't extenuate the oil that you build up during the day. Even if you have dry skin, everyone gets a little bit shiny in the T-zone, so use a little bit of a more mattifying foundation. And I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me in the color 210. It is the same color as the L'Oreal foundation, but it does not refract light. Hello. <laughs> so now I'm taking the Flat Top Kabuki and just buffing that into the skin. And as you can see, guys, it does a really good job of spreading the product evenly. Because of the synthetic hairs, it doesn't soak up product, so you can spread it more, uh, like, you know, farther across a larger area is what I meant to say. Um, a lot of natural hair brushes will just soak up your foundation, whereas this spreads it very nicely, and it's giving very thin, even coverage. It's not looking too cakey. I really, really liked the performance of this brush. And if you guys saw my surprise haul, my first impression of this brush, I literally couldn't speak when I felt how soft it was. This feels amazing on the skin. It is fabulous. I did feel the Sigma F80 when I was at IMATS, the tester one, just to feel it. And honestly, guys, I think I prefer this one a little bit more. The F80 is more dense, so you do get a little bit more color payoff, and you can build things up a little bit quicker. However, if you have sensitive skin or oily skin, sometimes you want a little bit of a softer and more flexible bristle, which this, br which this brush really has. Now I'm taking the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer and the little mini flat top kabuki brush and I'm putting that in a little triangle shape under the eye and just blending that in. Now this concealer dries a little bit quick so with this brush I think it would have been better to use like a concealer like MAC Pro Long Wear or the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Uh, this one just dries a little bit quickly so it's hard to work with if you're not using your fingers to warm up the product so I don't really like using it with a brush. However, this brush did a very good job at blending it out considering the quick drying consistency of this concealer. It's giving a very feathery texture. It's very light and airy, and it does a really nice job of not leaving streaks. A lot of brushes leave streaks on the face with foundation. This one did not, nor with the concealer. Now with the Round Top Kabuki, I'm just going to set the areas where I apply concealer with the banana yellow color from Makeup Forever, the one that does not have a color name on the back of it. And I like using a banana color instead of a white because it doesn't look so stark and you don't look as like sick. The banana color gives a yellow glow to those of us who have a warmer and more bronze skin tone. Now I am taking the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the color medium dark on the angled flat top kabuki and I'm just stippling that and pressing it into the face where I did not apply concealer just to set the foundation in. If you have acne prone skin you want to press your powder in as opposed to sweeping it across your face. That does not get enough coverage for those of us who have oily skin. You really need to pack that powder in but make sure you're washing your skin at the end of the night. With the pointed kabuki brush, I am now just applying my NARS Laguna to the hollows of my cheekbones and the perimeters of my face along the temples. This will just frame the face and make your face look a little bit slimmer. Hitting that on the jawline to sharpen it and create more contrast between my neck and my jawline. It will make it look sharper. And this is also a great trick for anyone who has a rounder face. Doing this will make your face look a little bit smaller. Just doing the same thing on the other side, buffing that into the perimeters of the face to help frame it. Then 
and sculpting out the hollow of my cheekbone and buffing it out. I may not have used the right brush for this, but I did want to use every single brush for a different purpose, but I think I might have not used that one for the right one. The flat top, the, I'm sorry, the dome kabuki would have probably been better to do that with. So now I'm taking the angled crease brush. Yeah, the angled crease brush and contouring the nose. I am using Over the Taupe by NYX. It's just a medium gray color with brown undertones. And I'm taking that down the sides of the nose in very, very light-handed motions. I don't want a heavy application with this. It's a very dark color, but it is the perfect color to mimic shadow. It has no redness to it, and it looks very natural. So Over the Taupe, really, really great color to contour with. For those of you with fair skin tones, you might want to use something a little bit lighter. And now with the dome blending brush, I'm taking the banana color from Makeup Forever and a medium taupe color, it's a lighter taupe color than over the taupe, from uh, Inglot and blending that into the crease just to add a little bit more definition and then sweeping NARS Laguna over the lids to make it look a little bit more deep set and get rid of that concealer look that the foundation caused. That is also over the taupe again, and I'm taking the pointed pencil brush and blending that into the lower lash line to deepen the lash line and make them look darker and make my eyes look a little bit more sultry. I have very, very small lower lashes, so if I don't do this, it looks very uneven to my longer upper lashes, which I accentuate with mascara. And then taking that banana color again from Makeup Forever and just highlighting the inner corner. Doing this will make your eyes look a little bit brighter and cause more contrast between your nose contour and your eyes. It will make the points of your nose look like they stop at a smaller point, so your nose will look thinner. And then sweeping luminous light all over the face. Oh, I'm sorry, that was uh, incandescent light and dim light. And now packing radiant light onto the middle of my face where I want it to be a little more bronzed. And tapping the flat top kabuki into Global Glow by MAC only once and stippling all over the face. This is not a fan brush, so you do need to apply only a very little amount of product. It picks up a lot and stipple. Do not just start sweeping it on your face. If you have a fan brush, you can do it however you want, but because I only wanted to use these brushes for this look, do not just pack it onto your face. And now with Luminous Light, I'm taking the angled crease brush again and sweeping that onto the brow bone to add a little light to it to lift it. Luminous Light is very beautiful. The, the lighting in my bathroom is pretty harsh, so it looks more shiny per se in this video, but in sunlight or in natural light, it looks very, very natural and sheer. It's not like shiny at all. I'm just doing my brows. You guys have seen me do that before, so I'm going to skip right through to that to go to mascara. Just curl in the eyelashes. Look how big they're getting. I'm so excited. My DIY lash growth serum will be up very soon. And taking my tinted clear mascara that I just dipped into a Marc Jacobs gel mascara, I am combing that through the lashes. And I just did a close-up of this for you guys to see. There is no clumping when you use a clear mascara, absolutely none. You can do as many coats as you want. It does take a little bit of patience because the formula dries so slowly, but this is good because you can build thinner coats, and if you let it dry for just a tiny little bit and then go back in, you're not going to get any clumps. You're still going to be able to coat the lashes evenly and separate them perfectly without compromising lift or the natural look that you're aiming for. If you're the kind of person who likes spidery, clumpy lashes, though, which looks beautiful on some people, then this is not a technique for you. This is for someone who wants to have a very natural look to their lashes or for any guys who have very sparse lashes and want to deepen their lash line without letting people know you're wearing any makeup. No one would ever look at your eyelashes when they have this on and think you have makeup on. Now I am lining my lashes with the Marc Jacobs marker. And that completes the look, guys. I hope you enjoyed. These brushes are absolutely amazing. Go pick them up. I love you all, and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. And until next time, bye. Your heart may freeze, or it 
can burn, the pain will ease, if I can love.